Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome to the 3D Physics Engine tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be talking about what a physics engine does exactly, both to introduce physics engines to people who might not be familiar with them, and also to give you an idea of what on earth we're going to be creating in this series. And I think physics engines are really one of those things that's just best explained with an example. So, here I am in Blender, which is a 3D program that happens to have a physics engine, and I'm going to show you just a basic example of what a physics engine does. So, as you can see, I've created a basic scene. It has a plane, a ball, and some cubes. And that's all I've done. The physics engine does the rest. All I have to do is say go. And as you see, the ball, the cube, the plane, everything just fell, moved, rotated, did whatever in a physically plausible manner. And that's what a physics engine does. It takes a group of objects in some initial state, and then it moves them, rotates them, deforms them, does whatever in a physically plausible manner. And just to be clear, the physics engine is just the part that's doing all that motion and rotation and all that. All the drawing, the things that's making the sphere and the cubes and the plane appear on screen, that's done by something different called a rendering engine. The physics engine's just doing all that motion stuff. So, yeah. And in a good physics engine, you should be able to not just take a ball and some cubes in a plane, but take any arbitrary list of objects with whatever properties you want them to have, and it'll give you a nice, physically plausible simulation with that. And that's what a physics engine is. So, now that we understand what a physics engine does, let's talk a little bit about how it works. And we're not going to go too, too in-depth here. We're just going to give a basic, high-level overview of how a physics engine works. Both, of course, so you understand how it works a bit, and also so that once we actually start creating a physics engine, you'll understand how doing all the things we do fits into the big picture. So, for example, let's say I have a box, well, this is the box, and a sphere. and we're going to be walking through a basic physics simulation with this, from a physics engine. So, how does it work? Well, a physics engine typically works in three stages. The first stage is the simulation stage. All it does is it goes through every object that you're simulating, and it moves it by, well, however much it needs to move, it rotates it by however much it needs to rotate, just blindly goes through and updates everything. So, if the ball's supposed to be moving this way, by, by and whatever speed it's moving at, and the box is supposed to be moving this way, whatever speed it's at, it'll go through and say, okay, the sphere's supposed to end up here now, the box is supposed to end up here now, and... done. And usually, this works out just fine, without any extra steps. Usually the box and sphere won't end up intersecting each other, and this is all it really needs to do. Of course, in this case, they've now ended up intersecting each other, and that's probably not what you want to happen. So, the physics engine does a few more things after it's done its basic simulation. One of the biggest things it does is collision detection. So after it simulates everything, it does collision detection. And this is exactly what it sounds like. It goes through every object in the simulation, and basically it creates a list of every pair of object that has collided as a result of the simulation. So you might have a list like this, where object A and B are colliding, object A and C are also colliding, so one object can collide with multiple things in collision detection. And of course, we also have our box and our sphere that are colliding. And this is 
all collision detection does. It just creates a list. It does not try and fix the intersecting issues. It does not try to decide what should happen to these objects that are colliding. It just figures out what objects are colliding. And finally, once you know everything that is collided as a result of the physics simulation, it does something called collision response. And, as you can probably guess, it's going to go through this big list of all the pairs of colliding objects, and it's going to decide how it should update them so that the collision is properly handled. And this purely depends on what objects are colliding. If I have a steel box colliding with a glass sphere, then the collision response might be the sphere shatters and all the shards go off and fly away. If I have, say, just... And I, maybe this sphere is like the mass of a planet, and this box is like just a really big cardboard box. Well, the planet's probably just going to shove the box out of the way. The box is going to spin off into oblivion. But if there are, say, this is a rubber box and a rubber ball, maybe they just bounce off each other. So this is one of the things that requires a little bit of input from the user. What sort of material are these ball and boxes made of? Because, depending on what material they're made of, or, well, you know, all that such, that determines how they're going to behave once they hit other objects. And for sake of example, I'm going to say they're rubber ball and rubber box, and you just bounce right off each other. And in that case, the collision response would be, well, it determines, based on how much they've intersected each other, that, hey, this ball has bounced off this much, in this way, and the box is going to bounce off this much this way. And, once again, it's going to update the positions. So the box is going to move to right there, and the sphere is going to move to right there. And done. And at that point, it can get rid of the collision detection list, and the collision, well, the physics simulation, is complete for this stage. That's the basic loop of a physics engine. And from there, it just goes back to the start, and restarts, finds the new direction that's supposed to be moving in, and does yet another physics simulation step. And there you go, that's the basic high-level overview of how a physics engine works. So there you go, that's all I really wanted to cover in this video. So, in the next video, we're going to start implementing a basic physics engine. And it'll be, of course, following this high-level pattern, and we're just going to slowly build into this and do some interesting stuff with physics. So, thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you in the next video.